Hey folks, it's pouring outside, perfect time to make videos. Anyway, we are moving on to Thomas Jefferson, who's the dominant figure of his age, Washington up to 1800. Jefferson probably for the next 25 years. It's called the Age of Jefferson. Um, the first slides, uh, slides one through six on that PowerPoint are all on his biography, and that's what I'm starting with today. This is the election of 1800 is an amazing thing in world history again because it is the first time there is a peaceful transfer of political power from one political party to the other. Usually somebody's assassinated or there's a war. This time, no assassinations, no wars, but a peaceful political party. I'm going to skip the election. Also a very bitter, nasty election between the two of them. Um, Again, Alexander Hamilton is working against John Adams, but the tide is clearly on the side of Thomas Jefferson. Hamilton finally, when there is a tie between Burr and Jefferson, has his supporters swing to Jefferson. As he said, Jefferson is to be preferred. He is by far not so dangerous a man. And we know about Aaron Burr being a dangerous man. So it's really thanks to Alexander Hamilton that Thomas Jefferson is elected. Is this a revolution? Not really. Jefferson has a different idea of federal government. He does try to shrink federal government a little bit. Um, his inaugural address, we are all federalists, we are all Republicans, trying to smooth feathers and to unite the country. He kept most federalist office holders, uh, replaced very few, but he also has majority in the Senate and the House so he can get what he wants done. He tries to lower the national debt. Again, Republicans are small government. How do you make government smaller? You take the money out of it. He did this by closing embassies overseas, by um, cutting the Army and Navy back down again and reducing them, and uh, having a very democratic White House. He would dress in ordinary clothes and actually answer the door himself, which really freaked out a lot of the European ambassadors. Where's your butler? Where are your help? And he was his help in the White House. Thomas Jefferson is good title, good hashtag for him, the American Sphinx. What is the Sphinx? The Sphinx is that thing in Egypt that nobody quite knows whether it's a man, whether it's a cat, or what it is. No one really knows about Thomas Jefferson. Washington, even Ben Franklin, absolutely Adams, they're pretty easy. You can figure them out. I've read about 35, 40 books on Thomas Jefferson. I still don't have a handle on him. He's difficult. There's a lot more there than what you see on the surface. He's a complicated, brilliant guy. John F. Kennedy, First year in office has all the Nobel Prize winners come in to dinner at the White House. He looks around the dining room and says there hasn't been so much brilliance in this room since Thomas Jefferson dined alone. And he was probably right. Jefferson is the great American genius, one of the great minds that America has produced, if not the greatest mind. He is a thinker. He is also a master politician. He is a promoter of America. He is a philosopher. Politics was his minor interest. What his two interests were really were classical music and reading classical literature. He said, I'm not a good politician, definitely not a public speaker. But he devotes 61 years of his life until he finally retired in 1808 to public service from his youth all the way through his retirement. He is a Renaissance man. He was a master of pretty much everything. I wish I was in class to bring you some of the books I have on him. He was a practicing architect, and I have a book of his architecture, things he designed that were built, including the entire University of Virginia, which is usually considered the most beautiful campus in America today. If you look at slides seven to nine, Monticello, which is often considered one of the most beautiful buildings and homes in America today, which he designed and did a lot of the carpentry himself on. He was a practicing carpenter. Uh, he was a master farmer. He introduced do dozens of vegetables and plants and fruit trees to America, tried out new methods. What he would do is test out new varieties. Anybody who traveled overseas had orders from Jefferson, bring me back the seeds. He would grow them at Monticello and whatever succeeded, whatever grew very well, he would pass out to all his friends in the neighborhood and then 
introduce new varieties into America. You can also blame him for French fries. He saw those in France and he brought French fries back to America along with a number of other things. Um, so who is Thomas Jefferson? His biography, he came from a upper middle class family. His father, Peter Jefferson, middle class, owned very few slaves, was a slave owner in Virginia, uh, had worked as a surveyor. He was a local leader and a very strong guy. If you had problems or your wagon was stuck in the mud, you go call Peter Jefferson and he'd come and get it out for you. Father was uneducated, but read well and read widely, had books in the house. Mother was a Randolph. This is a Virginia aristocracy, one of the first families in Virginia, very wealthy family. 10 kids in the family. Thomas Jefferson is the third of five children born in six years and the eldest son, a lot of daughters in that family. So there are three kids in five years born to the mother. His older sister, Jane, the, the kid above him, was a couple years older and everybody in the family said, oh, Jane Jefferson, she's much smarter than Thomas. She's the real bright mind in the family. How come we never hear about Jane Jefferson? If you're a woman in Virginia, you have two options. You're married, you have kids immediately, you never hear about her again. This didn't happen to Jane Jefferson. She died when she was about 20 years old and we never heard from her again. But everybody in the family said she's much smarter than the great American genius. Thomas Jefferson's father died when he's 14 years old. Thomas is the oldest son. He had one younger brother that was like 15 years younger. So Thomas at the age of 14 inherits 5,000 acres and 75 slaves. When he's 21, he becomes the manager. The mother really managed the plantation until he became 21. At the age of 21, he's a large landholder, a large slaveholder, and the second largest owner of slaves in his county. Jefferson, as you can see from those PowerPoints, uh, one through six on that uh, PowerPoint, is a handsome guy, much nicer looking than John Adams. He is six foot two, he is slender, he is incredibly athletic, he's very graceful, hazel greenish eyes, sandy reddish hair. The minute you hear reddish hair, you know there's scotch someplace in that background. Unlike George Washington, good teeth. Um, healthy, pretty much every day rode for four or five miles until he was too old really to get on his horse. Expert horseman, good athlete. Not as great as, as Washington, but a very good athlete. Personality, very serious from childhood. In college, by his own record and by other witnesses, he would spend 15 hours a day with his books and two to three hours practicing violin, which was his real passion music, and only sleep three, four, five hours. We'd all be brilliant if we could get by on three hours sleep.